Hey guys, what's up? It's Jax, the legend here. Today, I'm here with another Minecraft Redstone information video. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys all about the Minecraft comparator. Now, this block can get quite confusing, but I'm going to make it as simple as I can so all of you can understand it. It's one of the most used blocks in Minecraft Redstone builds, especially when you get higher up in the complexity of them. Um, and ever since they've been added, they have become super useful. Redstoning would be so different without them. The comparator maintains, compares, subtracts, and measures the state of any sort of redstone current going into the back or the side of them. And a lot of the time, people get confused between the comparator, the one with three little red dots, and the repeater, the one with two. You can see the comparator is a green one here, and this is a bad one, the one that I just broke. To craft a comparator, use this crafting recipe here. So it's three stone along the along the bottom, a quartz in the middle, and then three redstone torches going around that quartz. Okay, let's have a look at the first use of a comparator, how it maintains a signal. Unlike a repeater, the comparator maintains a signal strength. It doesn't boost it. Let's have a look at this. So as you can see here, the comparator, it enters in at a power level of two, it exits at a power level of two. Then over here with a repeater, it enters at a power level of 2, and then exits at a power level of 15. So there is a huge signal boost. Because a comparator maintains the signal, no matter how many comparators there are, this mechanic can be used in something called a pulse extender, where you place comparators like this, put a redstone on each side, and then your small pulse lasts for a longer amount of time. Now we're going to have a look at the next mechanic of a comparator, which is the comparison. So, it can the comparator can compare the strengths from um, this, both the rear and the side, on either side. If the signal strength on either side is greater than the one at the back, it will turn this current off. So for example, this right here, the signal isn't being turned off because both of these um, signal strengths are the same. But over here, if I place a redstone torch here, this signal strength is clearly stronger than this one, so the redstone lamp gets turned off. So this comparison mode is almost always active unless you right click it to turn it into subtraction mode. So let's have a look at subtraction mode. Pressing the button, like I said, will turn it into subtraction. Boop, 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 boop. You may have done this if you have ever made a repeater clock which is a clock that is often used in a dropper system. Subtraction is similar to the comparison, except it minuses the high of either side signals from the output. So if we head back here, we have a signal of 15 going into the back of the comparator. And if I place a redstone torch here, we have a signal of 13 going into the side. So that means it's gonna do 15 minus 13, which will give us a signal of two. So if the input signal is 10, that's the signal that is going into the back of the comparator. And the two side signals are 2 and 5. It'll choose the highest one, which is on, as you can see on the sign here, the right one, 5. And then do 10 minus 5, and then give us an output of 5. So on my automatic chicken cooker and feather farm, we have a comparator turned on to subtraction mode, as you can see, because the little light is on. This is also detecting out of this dispenser. What it is used for is when some items, say some just some grass blocks for example, go into this dispenser, it powers itself into the side, but turning itself off, and then it will turn itself back on again. This creates an infinite loop that will power on and off this dispenser, dispensing the blocks forever until they run out. Now the only way to put redstone into the back into the sides of these comparators is using these blocks. So you can use another comparator. A repeater, some redstone dust connected to like a torch, a lever, observer, anything like that, or a redstone block. Anything else will not work. The comparator, like we said earlier, can also be used to measure the block state. It will treat a certain block, for example a chest, as a power source, with the output of the comparator being in proportion to the fullness of the container. Here are some of the blocks that a comparator can get an output from. We have the dropper, um, dispenser, furnace, chest, barrel, um, the two different types of smelters, the brewing stand, the shulker box, and a hopper. It also works through a block, so you can have a comparator hidden. If I put a block into a uh, grass into here, it'll give me an output of one. The output for any empty container is going to be zero, and it's going to be 15 for when it is full. The amount of power output 
that you get from a container depends on how many menu slots it has and how many items you need to fill those slots. One of the simplest containers to showcase to this is the brewing stand, as it has 5 slots and has a maximum of 15 power, meaning each slot must give off 3 power. So a hopper, like the brewing stand, has 5 slots, however each of these 5 slots can hold up to a stack. So that means each of the a stack of item essentially becomes one fifth of the 15, so it gives off a 3 charge. Now here on my item sorter, you can see I'm using a comparator coming out of a hopper with some items in it to put out a signal. Now I've calculated how many items that need to be in this hopper for it to not reach this last piece of redstone here. But as soon as one extra item gets put into that hopper, it'll be th the signal will extend over to there. So let's put a few items in just to give an example. As you can see, it has extended over to that piece of redstoning right there. For those who are interested, here is the uh, formula that you can use to calculate the output depending on the items. The signal strength that you want times the amount of slots times 64 divided by 14 times the signal strength you want minus 1. Now this is, can be used in secret doors to allow you to put a, only a certain amount of items in to open a door and it can be used in more complex builds as well. So some non-containers, like for example a hive, can also be measured by a comparator to get a redstone output. So the amount of honey can be harvested using a comparator, like I said before. Um, I actually use this in my honey and honeycomb automatic farm. Uh, this is also in a nest. And as well as that, you can also measure the amount of cake that is left. So each slice will give a power output of two. So when I eat some slices like this, it'll have a lesser output. And then we have the composter. Now each level in this composter is worth one redstone output. So it has a total of eight levels. And then we come over to the daylight sensor, which can also work at night. But basically, depending on what time or day of day it is at, it'll give off a different redstone output. Then we have the item frame, which from for each 45 degrees, it'll give off a redstone output of one. So it has a total of eight different uh, redstone outputs. The next one we have here is a lectern. Now, depending on the page number that you are on, it will give off a different redstone output all the way up to page 15. So if you're on page one, give off a one output and so on. And here on my multi-floor bubble column elevator, I've used the lectern to allow you to select which floor you want to go to. So this is a good example of a non-container supplying varying amounts of power. Then we also have the respawn anchor. Now this varies on the amount of charges it has. So that's how many times you right click it with a glowstone. It goes 0, 3, 7, 11 and 15. So it goes up by f roughly 4 each time except for the starting one where it goes up by 3. And then we have the target block. So this varies on how close you hit your arrow to the center. So if I grab out a bow here. A, if I shoot an arrow and it lands all the way on the edge like this, the comparator will give off a less signal than if I say hit it dead in the center or pretty close to it. This can be used to make loads of fun mini games, and I believe Frilly if on Alphacraft, my Wild and Eyes SMP actually made one using this. Another really fun and interesting thing about the comparator and getting um, power out of box out on an item is that different music discs give out a different signal of strength. For example, we've got Chirp and 13 here. If I play one, it'll only give out a signal strength of one, as you can see here. But if I play the other, it'll give out a super fast signal strength. Some of these things can be super fun in traps, or you can make a secret door that opens up, or a secret enchanting room that opens up when you play a certain song. Now a few tips if you are using a comparator in your build and your redstone build is not working, make sure if you have it needed on subtraction mode that it is on that and if you don't that it is not turned on. As well as that, make sure you actually use a comparator and not a repeater. I've seen these mistakes happen so often because they are so easy to make, however they are also super easy to fix. So now you guys know how to use and what the comparator does, so you have a better understanding of the Minecraft redstone builds that you build. So that's going to be the end of this video guys, I hope you guys enjoyed, please leave a like, comment and remember to subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys later. And remember, stay carbonated!